security and privacy are the two biggest sticking points when it comes to moving business systems into the cloud. Out of the two, security is obviously the most important. After all, you can securely store data in a way that doesn't ensure privacy. But you can't maintain privacy if your supporting systems aren't secure. Thankfully, the security problem has pretty much been figured out. Today, there are a number of straightforward, internationally agreed-upon standards and best practices that companies can use to ensure that their servers are secure, either in-house or in the cloud. Privacy, however, is a much newer field. And although everyone seems to have their own opinion about what constitutes adequate privacy protection, the law may have a different opinion than you. And when doing business in the cloud, you may be dealing with conflicting privacy regulations that span multiple countries and industries. As we've seen with recent controversies, such as the WikiLeaks scandal, this is still a new area, and the courts are struggling to catch up with new developments. Although we can't offer any legal advice in this video, I'd like to present some good general tips that companies should consider when evaluating the privacy of their data in the cloud. Limit the data you collect. It's common sense that protecting a small amount of personally identifiable data should be easier than protecting a very large quantity. And you should also ensure that any personally identifiable information that you collect should be obtained in an open, transparent, and lawful manner. As privacy regulations continue to change and evolve, you should expect to see a growing trend where notification and consent will be required from consumers. And as consumers become more knowledgeable about their rights, you can expect to see an increase in the number of disclosure requests or lawsuits filed by consumers. By minimizing the amount of data that you keep on file, you minimize both the risk and the costs associated with administrating this sensitive information. As we're going to see, this is the single most important step that a company can take when it comes to maintaining adequate customer information privacy. Limit the use of personally identifiable information. This includes letting them know why you need this information and what will be done with this information once it's been collected. And once you've collected this information, don't share it with anyone or use it for purposes other than those agreed upon by you and the client. A typical example of misuse would be where a company combines multiple databases in order to glean more information about the client. Keep the data secure. Make sure that you have tight controls in place to prevent privacy breaches or data leaks. Once personally identifiable information goes into your possession, you have a responsibility to protect it against unauthorized use, theft, improper disclosure, or deletion. Talk to your IT department and make sure that you have all of the proper mechanisms in place to protect yourselves against hackers, viruses, data storage theft, and other technology attacks. Even if this data is stolen and misused by a third party without your permission, the victims and the courts will still hold your company responsible. Set policies for retention. In the beginning, we told you to limit the amount of information that you collect about your customers as a means of limiting the risks and costs associated with having that data in your possession. Many people will mistakenly assume that an alternative method would simply be to collect data, use it, and then destroy it when they're done. Although this approach sounds good in theory, many regulations stipulate that business documents and collected customer information must be retained on file for several years. In this case, destroying data becomes somewhat of a double-edged sword. If you store data for too long, you increase your exposure, but if you delete it too soon, you can fall out of compliance and face stiff penalties. Judges are also very aware of the fact that digital data can be easily altered without leaving a trace so your company should have controls in place to ensure the integrity of the data and demonstrate to a judge that it hasn't been tampered with. Set policies for the destruction of data. What does it really mean to destroy data? When you delete a file and empty the recycle bin, you only erase the label and address which points to the data. The actual data blocks that make up the file are still on your hard drive and can be retrieved using special software. In order to completely destroy a file, you must first delete it and then write over those data blocks with random bits. In fact, the Department of Defense recommends overwriting the data blocks six times after deletion. Let's suppose that you are hosting a virtual server with a cloud provider. If that cloud provider moves your virtual server to another physical device, you would often have no way of knowing, 
and the act of moving that server would leave behind residual data blocks at the original location. If this section were assigned to another customer, they could potentially access these data blocks and discover your data. Destruction becomes a special challenge when storing data in the cloud. Once you send data to a cloud storage server, how can you be absolutely sure that this data has really been destroyed? How can you make sure that other copies of this data don't exist? In a multi-tenant cloud server, how do you know if this data has been commingled with other users' data? So how do you make sure that you're protected in the cloud? One good thing is that there's a lot at stake for cloud providers, since a single breach could severely harm their reputations. Cloud providers are also being frequently audited by governments, stakeholders, and larger customers in order to ensure that the proper security procedures are being strictly followed. For small businesses with limited IT resources, the cloud is a good option because these service providers have much stricter security measures in place than would be feasible with an in-house data center. But you shouldn't rely on this alone. There are also mechanical precautions that you can take in order to make sure your cloud data is destroyed. By encrypting your data blocks using a strong encryption standard such as 256-bit AES, you can store your data on a cloud provider's servers without exposing it. And this data can be destroyed simply by destroying the encryption key. Know where your data is being stored. Once you've outlined the standards by which you want to protect your user data, you have to ensure that this information will be stored in a country that offers legal privacy protection that is equal or greater than the privacy standards you've promised to your customers. You should also be aware of all of the privacy regulations which apply across the countries where your data is stored. Often, you may find that different countries will have conflicting laws. In this case, you might be forced to commit a crime in one country in order to comply with the laws of another. For example, if a Canadian company stores their data in the United States and their data is seized under the Patriot Act, this could put them out of compliance with Canadian privacy laws like PIPEDA. By keeping all of your data within just a single country whenever possible, you limit the number of potentially conflicting legislations that could affect the privacy of your cloud data. Make someone accountable for data privacy. You should assign someone within your organization the role of monitoring the handling of all sensitive information and to ensure that the proper precautions are being taken to protect this data. This person should understand all of the compliance requirements for the company and have the means to ensure that internal policies are being properly adhered to by everyone who has access to the client data, regardless of where the data handling takes place. And there you have our top six tips for protecting data privacy when dealing with the cloud. Limit the data you collect. Limit the use of personally identifiable information. Set policies for retention. Set policies for the destruction of data. Know where your data is being stored. Make someone accountable for data privacy. By following our advice and with the assistance of your legal advisors, you can enjoy the benefits of cloud computing while also ensuring that your most sensitive client data remains safe and private. Before I finish off this presentation, I'd like to point out that privacy protection isn't just a legal or ethical responsibility. It's also good business. Actor Johnny Depp probably said it best in the following quote, You use your money to buy privacy, because during most of your life you aren't allowed to be normal. A company that can offer privacy to its customers is in possession of a very precious and desirable resource, and the price of this commodity will only go up in the future. If you'd like more information about safe, secure, and private cloud-based data protection, please visit Storage Pipe Solutions at storagepipe.com.